Hi, welcome back to BRMC's Healthy Connection. I'm Donna McMullen, your host, here today with Lori King McCracken, who is the Marketing Director for the First Step Program. And Lori, tell us first of all what the First Step Program is. Well, we are medical stabilization for those who are suffering from the addiction of pain medication, alcohol, and other street drugs. Okay. So this is a program where someone can come into BRMC. They can self-refer. And so they can refer themselves mm -hmm. into the hospital and say, okay, that's it. I know I have a problem. Um, I've decided I'm ready to handle it, face it, and... We can set up a appointment. We have a lot of people who uh, call and we build a relationship mm -hmm. and we might not actually admit that patient for a year yeah. because there's a lot of anxiety, um, you know, a lot of working things out, getting things set up to make that big decision sure and you know we have actually uh, someone right now that it's we've been talking for a year a year and finally okay. we've got everything you know the pets are going here and the, <laughs> the family members they take care of are going there um, there's still so much of a stigmatism about people admitting that they have a problem um, I'm sure that people still I mean they worry about losing their family their job uh, you know, will I lose my job mm -hmm. if somebody hears that I'm going through this program because I've been able to, they think, oftentimes, right. think that um, they're able to hide the fact that they have a problem, so. But we do have a lot of uh, people, patients who are employed, and they are able to work it out with their employer by taking like a short-term medical leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that seems, you know, they, fi they I think they feel better. It's more security. They know that they're gonna have a job when they get back. back. Yeah. What, uh, when someone, calls the, the number that we'll mention a little bit later in the show. When someone calls, what's the, what are some of the first steps that are taking? First to assess what the need is, find out what the need is, what the problem is. Well, a lot of people when they call, um, they just want general information. Mm -hmm. You know, um, do you take insurance? Probably right. Is one how, of the how, first am gonna, one. how am yeah, I going to pay, pay for this? For something like this? Yes. Yeah. But it's just the, you know, the general questions. Where do you live? How did you hear about us? Because, mm -hmm. you know, were you at the doctor? You know, did you receive, you know, something in the mail? How did you hear about us? Was it word of mouth? So we're gonna get your information where you're from because we've got to figure out transportation because not everyone that comes to Baxter Regional is for Mountain Home. Right. People come from Missouri. They come from, you know, South Arkansas. We have to figure out transportation. Then do they meet criteria? Mm -hmm. And and what's the criteria then for someone to be able to come in? First, they have to you know be addicted to the pain medication or the alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, second, do they do they go through withdrawals? Mm -hmm. And who's going to determine that? Is that the person themselves has to determine? You know, because they're going to know their body, right. and they're going to know when I stop taking this, do I react? Does my body react? Mm -hmm. If they do, then you know that's another criteria that they've met. And then you know, thirdly, is the financial portion of it. Right. Do they have the means to pay for it? Right. Do some insurances cover this? So far, we've had a you know uh, a good percentage of insurance companies that do pay for this. Mm -hmm. I so would think so. I mean, it's it's, it's a it's medical need. Sure, it's inpatient stay. We're not psychiatric, um, and that's a whole another ballgame issue that we don't you know we mm -hmm. are not qualified to deal with. You're just getting that patient stabilized to then, in fact, go to a another treatment program, center. a treatment center. Yes. Okay. After we do the the medical portion of it. Mm -hmm. We just we treat the patient, get them through the physical withdrawal. The physical withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So medications are administered to help them through three. how long are they usually there at the uh, hospital? Approximately three to five days three, and the medications okay. that they give the patient are to treat each symptom that the patient experiences. Okay. So if they're you know. and some of the symptoms are nausea, vomiting, mm -hmm. uh, tremors, mm -hmm. uh, headaches, uh, lack of sleep. So, and there really are, there's all sorts of medications to there's handle any sorts. one of those. Yes, and, you yeah. know, it's not just one medication that's going to just cure the whole body. They're going to treat each symptom because some people, you know, don't have the tremors or some people don't have the loss of appetite or the mm -hmm. anxiety. Each person's different, and so... So it's treated individually. Mm -hmm. A plan is, is. created it's for each individual. It's a planned admission for each person. Okay, under a doctor's care. Yes. Okay. So and our it. hospitals are the doctors who do care for our patients. Okay, so our hospitalists, and that's another whole realm that we could spend a great deal of time it talking is. about. Um, hospitalists, for those that may not know, are a group of physicians who 
are just that. They are at the hospital to attend patients who don't necessarily have a um, primary care physician. Am I Correct. And they, mm -hmm. and they see the patients there. They mm -hmm. don't have a clinic where patients will continue to see them. They treat them while they're there. And then when the patient leaves, they go back to their primary care where the primary care then takes over. From that point on. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, we were talking a little bit earlier today. Um, since the program uh, in 2008. Yeah, where were we at in 2008 when you first started? In 2008, we had 112 people call and inquire about our service. Okay. And then 2009, we went to 485 calls. So a huge jump. So there's a huge jump. Um, and this is, you know, individuals or family members or friends calling, maybe not about themselves for, you know, for Good someone job of else. Good marketing, Lori, yay. <laughs> well, and a little help with, with Miss Donovan Mullen here. And in 2010, we went from 45 to 617 people. Wow. Um, and we finished 2010 with 122 um, admissions. Admissions. Mm -hmm. The need we know is there. We know the need is there, yes. Yeah. But there are, you know, unfortunately, there are more hurdles that we do have to jump through. Um, and unfortunately, financial is the, is, biggest, one of those. is the biggest one. But we do try, if someone comes in and they're not able to pay for it, we, we always refer them some to, to another number mm -hmm. for help because we, don't, we never hang the phone up and leave the person sitting there. Yeah, so you always find a resource for we them. Do. And I know that there's, a, in Arkansas, there, there's not as much as we'd like to see by any means as far as treatment centers or resources but there's certainly some so there is uh, and i know that you've compiled all that information mm -hmm. to be able to refer people um, that just may not meet the criteria, the criteria at the hospital yes. yeah so we have a very large resor resource book that we do share with other um, agencies in mountain home we mm -hmm. all kind of work together mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have to. I mean, it, absolutely. There's so many areas in the hospital that we all partner up with. Right. So um, just to make the the health care in this entire state the best it can possibly be. So um, we all just share. So, Well, those are great numbers. I love hearing that. Yes, we are so, growing. So. Yeah. And so the folks stay right up um, in the hospital then when they're going through that through they're, the five they're day. They're placed on a medical floor. Okay. Um, okay. Because you're treating symptoms that anyone right. could have, whether mm -hmm. you know if nausea with the flu or uh, anything else like this. So, which is nice because then you're not segregating folks from the right, general population. Right. So they're you know with other patient other very sick patients. Mm -hmm. There's not just one location. That right screens and, and that's that's real important from a psychological standpoint mm -hmm. so that someone doesn't feel like you know oh gosh I'm, I'm a loser I'm a loser I'm a right. loser um, and we give the patient a survey because mm -hmm. we want to you know improve if there's anything we can do and most every survey that a patient fills out always talks so highly about the respect that they were given mm -hmm. they felt like no one judged them everyone was nice held their hand I think that's very important. I absolutely agree. people are very scared for what people are going to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I say, there's such a stigmatism about it. Anytime you need any kind of help, um, it's looked at as, instead of as a disease, it's mm -hmm. looked at upon as a, a weakness. You know, if you were stronger, you wouldn't have this problem. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we have family members that say, just stop. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wish yeah. it was that easy. Yeah. I wish it was that sure. easy, but it's... For, the, for these patients, it's not that it's easy. Not, it it no. really, I, I would think, is not any different than just saying, okay, I want the cancer to stop growing in my right. body. I mean, it's it's certainly parallel to that mm -hmm. as far as um, what someone is experiencing. Or stop me from eating that piece of chocolate cake. Oh, well. It's not going to happen. I mean, that's <laughs> all we're going to eat it. And then she cuts That's another <laughs> whole issue, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it time for chocolate now? Yeah. <laughs> So, well, it sounds wonderful. You're do, just doing a wonderful job and bringing folks in. And you'd mentioned that they're coming not just from this area. How far out are you reaching? We have received people Columbia. Oh, okay. And then all the way south Arkansas, Pine yeah. Bluff. Um, I would think it would be a big draw because there is, I keep using that word, but the stigmatism. I would think somebody may very well want to go out of town to receive their treatment so that the less people that know, the more comfortable right. they're going to be. Right. So, and yeah. we have people who are going to go on that fishing trip, but they're yeah. really going to come <laughs> yeah. to the yeah. to yeah. the hospital we're and going they're going to be the, treated. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it it is nice to kind of leave the scene and then come mm -hmm. 
somewhere and know that no one knows you mm -hmm. and no one's going to think you no think one's going to know you no one's going to judge you that, right that uh, yeah that's probably real helpful to, mm -hmm. to go ahead and, and we are one of the very few medical detox medical stabilization services in this area oh, okay let's we need to take a short break but let's continue with that as soon as okay. we come back from the break don't go away we'll be right back talking with Lori King McCracken from First Step